and we are live what's happening everyone welcome back to the punch perfect boxing channel before we get going today please make sure to like the video comment your prediction for this fight down below and if you are new please make sure to subscribe to the channel today i'm going to be doing my punch perfect preview and prediction for marimna sultanov taking on julio alamos this friday night in tashkent uzbekistan for those that don't know the wbc annual convention is currently ongoing this week over in tashkent uzbekistan and as part of that the wbc have linked up with the uzbek boxing federation to stage a card this Friday night. On that card you've got a lot of standout Uzbek fighters but also a title fight between Pedro Guevara and Carlos Quadras. My preview prediction is out now for that fight so please go check it out. And then you've got this fight. Well we've now got this fight. This is kind of take two for me because originally it was supposed to be Marimna Sultanov against Vincent Fagenberts of Germany and I was really looking forward to that fight. Last night I recorded a 20 minute preview and prediction for it only to then go on Twitter later that evening and realise that the opponent had been changed, Fuggenbutz was injured, and it's actually Alamos that's now stepped in. So really disappointing news to find that out, because I love the Nassau and Offus Fagenbutz fight. I know a lot of people are quite critical of the German, but I think he proved that he was fringe world class at super middleweight, and moving down to middleweight as a big puncher, a big physical specimen, I thought he could give some real problems to Nassau and and I felt like it was a step up that the Kazakh needed at this stage as well. But the, for those that don't know, and many people don't know about Julio Alamos, there are quite a few people that I like to consider sort of trade people that are involved in boxing that prefer this fight to Fagan, but they've got more belief in Alamos. He was a top amateur, and in the pros, although he hasn't got many big wins or big performances or fought many big names, he has a lot of talent. He's long, he's wiry, he's got deceptive power, and he's very skilled. And for someone like the Sultanov, that could be his kryptonite. So I think it's going to be a fascinating fight nonetheless. This wasn't a last minute thing either. The fight was actually pulled a couple of weeks ago, so he's had some preparation. And we've seen already that Alamos has fought two times this year, so he hasn't just been sat on the couch either. So he comes into this fight in good shape, and I think he'll pose some problems for the Kazakh. But for those that have followed the channel for a while know that I'm quite high on Marimna Sultanov. I've said for a while that whilst the middleweight division is absolutely dire, which really saddens me because it's one of the greatest divisions historically, and it wasn't too long ago that we had one of the greatest and two of the greatest middleweight fights of all time between Golovkin and Canelo, and there were a lot of world-class guys in the division like Danny Jacobs who were fighting Golovkin and Canelo, and there were some really good fights. The division since then has been really weak and really poor. The champions haven't wanted to fight each other, haven't wanted to fight at the best of times. The talent pool in terms of the contenders and prospects coming through has been really shallow as well, which has been disappointing. But despite all that, one thing I've always maintained and I've always said over the last couple of years is beware the Kazakhs because it doesn't end with Gennady Golovkin. You've got the likes of Yanabek Alim Hanali and Marina Sultanov coming through. And I had a lot of belief in both of those guys. I've always rated Yanabek a little bit higher and I think we've now seen the proofs in the pudding as he's a unified champion, the best in the division and for me a pound for pounder already as well. I think his talent is off the charts. And if Golovkin leaves big boots to fill, I think Yanabek can fulfil one of them and also the other can be filled by uh, Nasultanov. But it has to be said that Nasultanov needs to get a move on. He turned pro in 2016. He's 30 years old now. We can't keep calling you a prospect or a contender forever, dude. You need to take these step ups. And Fagenberts was a step in the right direction. I felt last year he started to take the steps in the right direction as well. Would have liked to have seen him be a little bit more active this year with three or four fights. But nonetheless, it feels like it's ramped up a little bit over the last 12 to 18 months. But in 2024, if he comes through this weekend, we need to see him mount a serious assault on the division. Because if Yanabek starts wrapping up all those belts, Nasultanov's going to be stuck. I don't see a fight happening between two Kazakh fighters. They've got a lot of respect for each other. And a lot of Kazakh fighters don't want to fight one another. So if Yanabek picks up all those belts or even picks up another one of them, there'll only be one belt remaining with governing bodies and with the WBC not seeming to want to strip uh, Jamal Charlo. It could become a really sticky situation for Nasultanov where at 30 years old or eventually 31, 32, he's going to be in a position where he's waiting for Yanabek, his countryman, to vacate all the belts so he can eventually fight for one. And he may not be at his best by then. He may go stale. There may be guys that come through in the division that are better than him. More Kazakhs might come through in the division. There's a lot of great Uzbek fighters at middleweight and the amateurs, they could come through. So he needs to get a move on and a win this weekend is important. But not just a win, a statement win. Get rid of Julio Alamos in convincing fashion. Go out there, stop him, beat him and punish him. Because we don't want to see another okay performance. 
We've seen him step up and deliver some good performances. We've seen him step up and deliver some average performances. This Friday night in Uzbekistan, we need to see a serious performance from the Sultanov to let the middleweight division know that they are on notice. Looking at this fight, I think that the Sultanov is the better fighter. I think he's got more talent, but he's guilty sometimes of just relying on single shots. Of the Kazakhs that are kind of at world level at middleweight, the Sultanov reminds me more of Golovkin in the sense that it's hard single shots, fantastic jab, sits down on his punches more, doesn't so much focus on his movement, but has methodical footwork and walks you down, cuts you off, and throws that hard jab and leads off from that jab. Whereas Yanibek is much more fluid, he relies on his feet a lot more, southpaw, throws from awkward angles, is much more dynamic. But the Sultanov is very methodical, he's very organized in the way that he fights and the way that he progresses forward and leads off with the jab is very impressive but the one thing he's been guilty of at times is being outworked you know the fight against uh, Marcelo Caceres who fights Diego Pacheco this weekend he really struggled against him because at times he just wasn't being busy enough and Caceres was taking rounds off him uh, in his fight over in uh, South Korea earlier this year against Kasuto uh, Takisako, he got outworked to the body a lot and didn't seem to like it either. He eventually pulled out a massive knockout in that fight, and I encourage you to go watch it on YouTube. But he didn't like it to the body, and against Caceres, he got outworked. So there's definitely flaws in the Sultanov. I think he's the better boxer than most guys he faces, and I think in terms of just raw punch power, he's a harder hitter than most guys he faces as well. But he can be outworked, he can be outboxed, so he's not the perfect fighter. And against someone like Alamos that is busy, he can box long, he can box up close, he's got deceptive power. I think Nasultanov could be in for a really tough fight if he doesn't get things right. To talk a little bit more about Alamos, as I just mentioned, better when he's boxing at long range but can get in close and get some good work done as well. Doesn't really have any standout wins on the resume. Most of his most impressive names that feature on his resume were when he fought in the amateurs. And a lot of the work that he'd done in the amateurs is still the most impressive thing on his resume today. He had quite an interesting journey where he moved over to uh, to New York to go and box out of Gleason's gym to kind of enhance his ability, learn new things, uh, work with better fighters and improve himself. So he's been a fighter that's dedicated his life to boxing. He's had a rough couple of years, although he came back in 2022 and has been very active since. In 2018, he had a series of wrist injuries that resulted in him taking time off. He had to take some time off between 2019 and 2022, obviously during the pandemic, and for other different reasons, had to go and find other means to make money and stuff, so went into a full-time job. So boxing has been his life, but at times boxing hasn't paid him back, and he's had to explore other means and hasn't been able to take his career as seriously as his talent kind of demands. But Alamos is a really switched on fighter. I think the most significant name on his resume was probably his most recent opponent, which was the unbeaten uh, Etinoza Aliha, which took place over in Germany for the IBO middleweight title. That was a fun competitive fight. The scorecards were very close in that one. I think two judges had it 7-5 in favour of his opponent and one judge had it 8-4 in favour of his opponent. But it was a very close fight. Alamos made him work for it. And it was a really good matchup between two unbeaten middleweights for the IBO title. He came up just short. But that was back in July so he's been very active this year this will be his third fight he fought twice in 2022 so although he's had his problems outside the ring he has rebuilt nicely and I still think he has more to offer so how do I see this fight playing out I think the Sultanov needs to lead off with that jab and break Alamos's rhythm and his construct he's a guy that likes to get in full flow with his movement and his footwork and the way he lets his shoulders roll and lets his shots move he's a very fluid fighter Alamos but we've seen with Nasultanov, and I think a great example of this was against Andrei Sorotkin, who's one of the best wins on Nasultanov's resume. Sorotkin is a very reliable gatekeeper at middleweight and has even crept up to super middleweight at times. And Nasultanov beat him down with the jab, broke everything that Sorotkin had, broke his construct, broke his heart, broke his face with the shots, and basically unsettled him right from the off. And as we progressed into the middle part of the fight, the Sultanov was just there to take him out. And Sorokin was beaten up and bruised by the Sultanov just doing the very basic things well early on in the fight, but in a brutal manner. And I think we need to see something similar against Alamos because Alamos can outwork the Sultanov and can get work done to the body where the Sultanov doesn't like it. 
And Soltanov sometimes a bit guilty of just kind of boxing on the back foot and let his opponents come to him, and he's not really much of a counter-puncher. I think he's at his best when he's walking you down behind that jab and getting after you. So if he can do that, if he can make Alamos feel his presence, Alamos is a big guy at six foot one. he's rangy, but he's quite slender in the way that he fights and his physique. If Nasoltanov, who's a lot more thick set and more physical and a bit more of the bully, a bit more headstrong, if he can get onto him, I think he can break him down and wear him out. But I think this is a really interesting fight. I'm still a bit disappointed it's not Fagan Butts because I think that was a bit of a better step up and meant a little bit more for Nasoltanov's resume. But nonetheless, this is a good fight at middleweight, and I think Nasoltanov is going to get the win, but a hard earned win. And the fight's over in Uzbekistan. I know he's from Kazakhstan, but. I think this is an opportunity for him to showcase his skills and I think that he'll get anything that goes close on the scorecards as well. So we've seen the Sultanov perhaps struggle against a world level gatekeeper in Caceres. We've seen him deal with a European gatekeeper in Andrei Sorokin. It's now time to find out what he can do at world level against the guy that could be considered a world level gatekeeper that's challenged for the IBO title in Julio Alamos. Let's find out this weekend. I'm going to ride with Nasoltanov and I hope that he produces a fantastic performance so we can really get excited. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.